welcome back to St. Otto and the Barn Garage. If you've been having trouble with repeated pan gasket leaks, no fret, you're not crazy. You're not losing your touch. This is a very common problem. I get questions about this a lot, and not just on the 4L60s, 4L65Es, anything with a bottom pan, you're gonna have this trouble at least once until you learn how to deal with it. Number one, pan gasket leaking, or it seems like the pan gasket leaking, you replace the pan gasket, and then after replacing the pan gasket, you notice it's still leaking. Well, could be that you over tighten the pan gasket. And if you look at this old pan gasket here, it's kind of flat right there. It's kind of flat and it's split and you can't really see the split until you move it. You see that split right there? Now, over tightening these on these earlier pans also make a bump right here. And I'm gonna show you later how to fix that bump. But you put two or three gaskets on here, you're making sure that you're not over tightening it and you still got a leak. Well, if that's the case, it's probably because it didn't have a pan leak in the first place. What happens is this O-ring right here leaks and it leaks down from this little gap right here and goes right to the edge of the pan. And because of surface tension, it'll cling to the transmission here and it spreads out all along the edge here, all along the edge of the pan and soaking that pan gasket and making it look like the pan gasket is leaking. Or the dipstick tube, right here where the O-ring for the dipstick tube goes in, especially if the little tang here is broke off and the dipstick can move around. It'll leak from here and go down here and it's only got that far to go. So you, you're really not gonna be able to see unless, and you've got exhaust coming down through here, getting in the way where you can't see good. And really anything that can leak down here and get onto the pan, especially if it's in the front, like the O-ring for the pump, where it leaks along in here. You take the pump out and you replace the O-ring and it'll leak again because you gotta take some scotch Brite and clean this up right here where the O-ring seals off or it won't seal off and it's right there at the pan and it'll come down and make it look like the pan's leaking. Same thing with the front seal. All that just come out there. Okay, also you have here where the plug goes in on the 4T60E and 4T65Es which the 700R4s don't have this, but all the lighter electronic ones have it. And it just, when it starts leaking right here and it runs down and right to the edge of the pan where your lines go in. If it leaks here, it's going right down to the pan. And then back here on the 4T60E, the tail housing, if it leaks here, it can get all over the mount and then make its way to the pan which is kind of hard to do because the wind is coming this way and anything leaks up here, it gets the pan and it runs it down the side of the pan, makes it look like the whole side of the pan gasket's leaking. On this other side, the shifter, the shifter seal leaks and it leaks down to the pan and makes the pan gasket look like it's leaking. But on the Ford, let me show you the Ford. The AODs and 4R70Ws, the, pan, the tail housing gasket is right there at the pan gasket. So it'll leak directly on the edge of the pan and spread out and make it look like the pan gasket's leaking. And you can see this Nissan over here is made the same way, where the tail housing is right to the pan gasket. There's one more thing too. If the transmission is overfilled or if it's overheating because heat makes the transmission fluid expand, transmission fluid can come out of the vent right here and if it doesn't have the rubber hose on the vent leading up like some of the 4x4s do, if it's just open like this is, like a car, then that fluid will come out the vent and run down, and run down here. And then that could give you a double problem because it might get on this connector here, or it might get all over here and make it look like this O-ring's leaking or this connector's leaking and look like the pan gasket's leaking. So make sure you look up, up, up to get all the way to the top and start from your top down. And sometimes if it's really clean, the transmission's really clean, it's harder to find the leak than if it's dirty because when it's dirty, you know, it might make a clean spot where it's leaking and you can just follow the clean spot up to where the fluid's coming out. I've seen a lot of guys very successfully take some baby powder and just a puff of baby powder and look to see where the baby powder sticks. You can find the wet spot and see the wet trail and find it that way. And that works whether it's clean or dirty. You wanna get rid of these divots where it's the, the bolt's been tightened up several times and it's pushing up on the spot where the bolt goes through. 
then you take a ball peen hammer and you set the, the round part squarely on the hole, find the edge of a nice strong table, like a stainless table like that one or that one. I guess you can't see that with it being off camera, but trust me, there's I'm surrounded by stainless work tables. And I'm very thankful that I am. Love those stainless tables. So lay it on the edge of there, get close to where the leg is on the table so you're not bowing the table doing this repeatedly over the years. And when you've got that round part right there, take a second hammer and smack the hammer. Medium, not hard, it's medium. Do it a couple of times till you get that nice and flat. And if it goes a little bit beyond flat, that's, that's not too much of a problem, but don't make it just really stick out convex the other way. You just need it to be mostly flat. And then just don't over tighten the bolts. These old Chrysler pans that use silicone, they're always sitting at an angle and there's always some fluid running down to the edge and dripping off of a corner. Now, you're gonna wanna walk away from it, go have your lunch, go work on another car or something like that. Let it drip into a pan, get as dry as you possibly can. Take some brake clean or something and, and clean off the surface area real good because you're gonna be putting silicone on there. The silicone needs to stick and it needs to dry. And once you get your surfaces dry enough, you take a paper towel or something in that corner that's always dripping get your silicone and all that and then wipe that last bit off of that corner and put that pan up there and put four bolts in it real quick so that it doesn't run down in between your silicone and your gasket surface don't fill it up with fluid right away again go find you something else to work on for at least five minutes or something before you fill that thing up with fluid and put something like an extra fender cover or something over the engine bay or something to remind you that it doesn't have fluid in it so don't forget to put fluid in it and, uh, and take the keys with you so nobody else in the shop can turn on the car while you're waiting for your silicone to set up and they don't realize that it ain't got no fluid in there. You don't want them starting the car up and ruin the pump and the transmission. On second thought, don't put that key in your pocket. You'll end up at home with the, some customer's key in your pocket. <laughs> put it on the top of your toolbox and close and lock your toolbox while you go do something else. Maybe put it on top of your toolbox and if you've got a one gallon container of fluid, you're planning on putting in there. Set the container of fluid right on the key. And I'm Victor Sane. If you find this or any of my other videos helpful, please consider subscribing. Till the next video, get off the couch and get dirty. Hey, if you like this video, we got a whole lot more. We've got tool reviews, we've got repair videos, we've got show car videos, hot rods, mod rods, you name it. If it's got wheels on it and an engine, it's probably on this channel. So subscribe, like, and binge watch Sane Auto. Binge watch Sane Auto. Binge watch Sane Auto.